Happy Saturday, YouTube, and good morning to all. You know, this week was crazy busy for me. It was a roller coaster of emotions. On one side, you know, we're growing our BPO business. You know, we just added 500 more stations, and this is just helping us to deliver more calls every day to our customers, whether it's final expense or Medicare. But you know, a lot of agents forget that we don't do refunds. If you take our training, we invest our time in training you. We don't do refunds if you make an order. If you're a bigger agency, we have lead service agreements, but both sign a non-disclosure agreement. And you know, for me, for the last few months, I had been fighting this lawsuit for our company and I was personally fighting this. And this lawsuit came from a customer of mine that reached out to me last year by the name of Ads Checkout. And they reached out to me, a team of brothers, and they said, hey, we saw you on YouTube. We love what you're doing. We've talked to a few of your customers. They love your leads. Not only do we want the leads, but we need your training. Can you white label this? What can you do for us? I said, absolutely, we can white label this. And so we went ahead and charged them for the white label, several thousand dollars. We provided the training in that white label. So every single one of their customers, when they would come on board, they would receive my training. And that's what we did. And the lead service agreement was signed as well as a non-disclosure agreement was signed by this company. Now, the lead service agreement was for six months. Those six months basically covered exactly how many leads we would send a day, how we would handle disputes, how we would handle payments, and what would happen in the event we were not able to deliver you know, the requested volume that was paid for. And for those six months, the customer paid on time, prepaid every month, just as we agreed. But on the last month, after months of not only delivering the leads on time, quality leads, standing behind our 20% guarantee, because that's right, if the agent or agency follows our training, we stand behind a 20% conversion ratio guarantee. And in this particular case, this company purchased thousands of dollars worth of leads. And in the end, I think we only came out of pocket maybe 60 leads that we gave to either a client or an agency to, to fulfill our 20% conversion ratio guarantee. That's nothing compared to the thousands of dollars they invested in leads. So we went ahead and did our part. Their customers, their clients were satisfied by the training, by the quality of the lead. And on top of this, I myself, as JJ the trainer, would step in and do workshops in real time to help their customers win. And I share all this stuff because no lead vendor does this. They sell you the lead and that's it. We provided more than just providing a lead. We provided training and we stood behind that. So we fast forward six months. On the six months, on the last two weeks of our contract, we dropped the ball. Due to the saturation rates on the phone, it was very challenging for us to meet our goal. That was prepaid. It was challenging for us to meet that goal. We accept that. And we were short 200 calls that month that we missed the last two weeks of that contract. We own it. When that when the customer calls me and says, hey, man, you know, this is hurting my business. These 200 calls, you know, are destroying my name, my reputation. I told them, you know what? You need to relax because, you know, we will make this right. We can either forward the calls next month uh, when we renew the contract. Or if you like, we can refund you the calls we couldn't deliver and 
On top of that, how many invoices did you have to refund to your customers? $3,000 worth. I said, we'll make a special concession and help you out with that $3,000 because we recognize we didn't hit the mark. But in our lead service agreement, we had all this you know, covered in the event it happened and it did. It shouldn't have been a big issue. But it became a big issue. Within days of that conversation, the customer was irate and he was uh, threatening me with litigation. He was going to sue me. And I told him, hey, you know, go ahead, get your lawyer. Give me your lawyer's information. If, if you're already talking like that, then maybe we should talk with your lawyer instead of talking with you. We didn't hear from this customer for a month, two months. We didn't hear anything. And what's even crazier about this is that I recommended many people to this company on a premise that I would be paid, compensated for doing that type of marketing for them. But we didn't hear from them for about a few months until I received the lawsuit. When I received the lawsuit, being in Pennsylvania, I'm in California, I got that lawsuit on a Friday, talked to my legal team here in California, and I realized real fast that I needed to find someone in PA that can help me respond to this lawsuit and obviously fight it. Boy, was that hard to find somebody in PA that understood this type of litigation and which is basically commercial litigation, it was really challenging. And the law firms that I did speak to, they asked for $50,000 retainers. I get it, I get it. I mean, a top level attorney, he's gonna charge maybe $1,200 an hour, a junior, you know, maybe 300, 200, I get it. But the amount of how much money it costs didn't make sense to me. So I went back to my team and I said, what do you guys think? And one of my legal advisors says, why don't you file yourself improper and ask for more time so you can find adequate legal advice and representation, so on. So I went ahead, filed everything. Shortly after that, when we started looking at all this documentation, we realized that their lawsuit had one flaw out of many. I realized that they had not included our lead service agreement that covered disputes, volume issues, and in the event we would have a dispute, we would go to arbitration. So the plaintiff, my customer, <laughs> did not add that in the lawsuit. On top of this, my customer breached our agreement by soliciting directly to my subcontractors in Pakistan. Luckily, you know, only one of them out of all the ones that they solicited and my customers, you know, fell into this and just, you know, really dived into their whole deal of how this lawsuit worked out. So these people, once I received the lawsuit, once I responded, what was happening in the background is I was being attacked personally, my customers were being attacked, my, um, my ex-spouses were being attacked by these guys, they were creating fake profiles. Some of the friends that I thought were friends turned out to be dirty snakes and you know who you are. But after months of fighting this lawsuit, we came to the part of discovery, the initial disclosures, which they consider uh, Federal Civil Procedure 26A and 26F. 26F is a meeting, a conference to discuss how the the trial's gonna go, how you're gonna fight this case, what's gonna be accepted in court, what's not. And at this point in time, the plaintiff asked to withdraw the lawsuit. 
They didn't want to pursue it anymore. Why is that? Because non-disclosure agreements, lead service agreements are valid. And you, if you sign one, you're going to have a very hard time fighting it in a court, period. You're going to have a hard time fighting it. And this is what happened in this case. Unfortunately, you know, they, they, they cause a lot of damage by, you know, making fake posts on social media, prank calling my family and a few other dirty shit they did. You know, they did that. And part of my settlement on top of other issues that I asked for in order to withdraw this lawsuit, because let me tell you what, without my permission to let them withdraw the lawsuit, they can't withdraw it because of my counterclaims. And I'm, my counterclaims were almost a million dollars. But again, the dirty shit that was done that these people orchestrated, not only did they breach the agreements that we had signed, but the level of going, creating this fake campaign, the slander campaign was just, I think just bullshit. And a lot of that came from a group in Pakistan that was a subcontractor agency of ours that fueled a lot of this defamatory comments that were made were fueled by this Pakistan group. So now that we have settled the issue here in the US in my favor, now we're going to be going to Pakistan next month on the 15th of September to handle that situation. Because unfortunately, a lot of you guys that sign agreements with U.S. companies, at some point in time, you think that if you determine that someone breached the agreement, you can do or say whatever you want, you're wrong. In this case, this group in Pakistan, they try to take me out of the relationship. They wanted to go directly to that client. And that client wanted to go directly with my subcontractor for many, many monetary gains. Why pay me, right? Well, wrong. Non-disclosure agreements are real. Lead service agreements are real. Whether you live in Pakistan or in the U.S., this settlement here is sealing the deal for the lawsuit that is pending in Raul Pindi on the 15th of September. Because it's about breach of contract and defamation. For a lot of you guys that even saw these people created fake profiles of me on Skype, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. And I could go on and on and on and on of shit they did. And all I did was just gather my information, just stay quiet and just let you guys do what you did. And here we are. Now in this settlement, part of it comes with a confidentiality agreement. And I promise you, I'm going to respect it. <laughs> but at least I'm happy that I won this in my favor. And one of the clause in my settlement that I'm really going to love to see is that this group has been instructed to remove any negative comments, any fake, fake Facebook, anything. They got to remove it. If they have an associate, they got to reach out to that associate, tell them to remove it. And it's a win because a lot of you guys go online, talk shit about people. And think that just because you're hiding behind a screen that no one can reach out and touch you. Boy, are you wrong. And this is a perfect example of that. So for all of you guys that were watching this lawsuit unfold, here are the good news. I'm happy. And for the guys out in Pakistan, I can't wait to see what the judge says when she or he reads over this settlement agreement where... Unfortunately, you know, it puts you right in the middle of it.
So for all of you out there that had an issue with a center overseas that you had a problem with, give me a call. I would be more than happy to show you some things that you can do to get some recovery. How you can do it. There's a way to do it if you're a U.S. national. So with that said, guys, see you guys at the top. Peace.